As Jack Athic, the cybersecurity lead with Elastic for Asia Pacific. Thanks for joining us on our Tech and Sec Weekly. Thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, Elastic's a very interesting uh, company, and your role as cybersecurity lead uh, sounds just as interesting. We've had a pre interview chat, and um, there's a lot to cover off on here, but we're going to be covering off on generative AI, the use of AI uh, within a security context, uh, security operations center. Uh, and this is on the back of the CISO Melbourne uh, with Corinium that we were media partners with. So well done for getting involved with that as well. I saw some of the uh, the socials come off that. Uh, maybe uh, your role as cybersecurity lead, and then we'll cover off on what you presented down in Melbourne. Yeah, thanks, Chris. So as cybersecurity lead uh, for, uh, for APAC at Elastic, um, my role is primarily to kind of work with some of our more strategic customers, you know, some of the larger customers that we have in region. You know, we work across government to FSI to telco all the way to education and digital native. So uh, Elastic as a platform has broad relevance across the market. And these folks have very kind of different security challenges. So what that means uh, for me and my team is we get to engage with, you know, some of the senior practitioners, some of the executives at the cyber, in, in the cybersecurity teams to understand, you know, what some of their unique challenges are uh, when it comes to doing preventative security, when it comes to doing, you know, um, threat detection and investigation that's actually fit for purpose across large complex environments. So um, I like to get my hands uh, dirty and, you know, get really involved in some of those uh, nitty gritty details. Uh, but then I also got to do fun things like go to CISO Melbourne and talk about, you know, what AI means for cyber. So um, there's a lot of variation. Well, that, that would be a question for me. What, what does it mean in, in this context? Now, take it, you take a a relatively positive view, uh, you know, the, the technology cuts both ways uh, in terms of its use uh, by actors or, th or threat actors. But yeah, what type of questions do you find sort of the CISO suite sort of asking, you know, what, what can we use this for? You know, mm -hmm. can we bring this, you know, this data set in and what will that mean? Yeah, what, what's the sort of the key sort of questions that they're asking at this stage? Yeah, you're totally right. Let me let me start by saying this, right? So AI is fairly, it's still in the fairly early stages. And when, I, when I'm talking about AI, I'm specifically talking about the developments in things like large language models at the moment, yeah. right? So generative AI, um, you know, and, you know, it's, we're, we're about f five, six months potentially, uh, you know, since it's really been uh, the talk of a uh, talk around town. Um, and a lot of people are kind of thinking, look, this is, this sounds awesome. I've you know taken it out for a spin, and I know that it can be fairly compelling and powerful. But I also know that there are some uh, there are some pitfalls in this stuff. Like, what can I actually do? Like, how can I actually leverage this in my day to day? Um, and you know, let me kind of tell you the boring part first, right? There's there are no kind of you know brand new revelations or groundbreaking uh, findings here, you know. Uh, for me, AI and LLMs in particular are just another tool in the arsenal that we have um, mm -hmm. to kind of drive down some of the things that we've always been wanting to drive down. So if you if you kind of think back, you know, 5, 10, 15 years, right, what, what are the things that security teams have always wanted? If I think about it, you know, we've always wanted to minimize dwell time. If something bad happens, I want to I want to minimize the amount of time that that thing has in the environment before before I find out. Um, you know, we've always wanted to um, increase the speed at which we can remediate things. If something bad has happened, I want to clean it out as quickly as I possibly can. And maybe the other thing that we've always wanted as a security industry is we want to have better, more meaningful uh, investigations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, well, that, that often means visibility, right? I think that's something that Elastic uh, from a platform uh, looks like it gives you best visibility across your environment. Exactly. So it means visibility, but it also means, you know, visibility can be a double-edged sword because visibility without necessarily the analytics that help you drive investigations means that you can get into these really deep rabbit holes. And yeah. before you know it, you've spent multiple days uh, pivoting and kind of going down, going down this, uh, these parts of lines of questioning um, that don't uh, necessarily kind of move the investigation along. So having technology um, that is able to number crunch and say, hey, you know, here are some indicators, here are some reasons why you should take the investigation down this path is really, really helpful. Um, so those those are things that teams have always wanted. Um, and the way I see it, um, LLMs and and this the, the uh, improvement in these tools um, really help you improve those metrics, which ultimately help you improve security posture. 
do you adapt the generative AI or the tool sets for your platform? So, you know, there's some always some limitations on sort of open text and, and what it can search for and what it can actually do because there's limitations on on either dates or, or certain data access. Mm -hmm. But within your platform, you can give it access to the data that you want and therefore the power and accuracy of the responses are much better. Is that is that how it's working when you apply it on your own platform? Exactly, Chris. So that's that's definitely down the uh, that's the path um, that we're going down as as a product and as a company. So Elastic's in this uh, really um, powerful position because Elastic generally has uh, you know we we hold and we make searchable um, the data the the internal data um, that enterprises hold um, that that often contains some of the signals and the information that they uh, need to uncover to do their job. Um, you know, LLMs, these are really great technological improvements, but those generally act on publicly available data. So there's often that uh, that that gap um, in between what LLMs have access to and what organizations actually need to kind of make sense of. Um, and Elastic can, you know, act as that bridge. Um, so over the last couple of years, we've actually been making, before, before LLMs were mainstream, We've been making investments in the platform uh, around things like vector search, around things like being able to bring in your custom sort of uh, machine learning transformer models um, that are really the fundamental building blocks for you to kind of build this capability internally. Um, so I'll say that. So that's that's kind of the part that we're going down now. You know, that doesn't mean that OpenAI and some of the publicly available um, platforms out there don't have Im immediate relevance. Uh, the reality is they do. Um, they can really help augment that security analyst workflow. They can, uh, you know, significantly boost productivity. Um, they can uh, act as a force multiplier. Uh, you know, you've got, you know, rock star analysts, but you don't have many of them, um, right? So, it, you know, you can really give them the tools that they need to move really fast. Um, and that was what my talk was based around at CISO Melbourne. Where do you see, well, I was going to ask, what what sort of team members are using it best? And analysts are obviously probably one. Do you see it having um, relevance across all aspects of the security team? or And certainly, where are the strengths within that security team? And, and how active uh, would it be getting used? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, look, Again, we're early. We're early days in exploring the workflows and understanding where exactly you know these things can really be operationalized, and where you know it's a little bit more early days or exploratory. Uh, I would say analysts are probably kind of the uh, you know the main beneficiaries of these uh, developments. Uh, if you think about it, analysts really act in this loop of you know looking at an alert, gathering context, and then deciding, hey, is this something that's worth acting on? Is this something mm -hmm. that's malicious or benign? Um, you know, it's often called the OODA loop. Um, and what AI can do here is really boost the way in which analysts can gather context. Um, you know, we, we've been using automation as an industry. So like SOAR was actually one of those tools that really promised to help in that, in that sense, you know, gathering context. AI, the way I see it, is another way in which you can boost that workflow. So when someone looks at an alert, they've got all the information um, at their fingertips so that they can quickly decide what they want to do. Um, now, outside of that, there are a few other capabilities in, uh, you know, a few other disciplines in security um, that can also definitely leverage this. So detection engineering is another one that comes to mind. Uh, if you've got a mature security team, what you're often doing is building and writing detections uh, that are very specific to your internal environment and to your company. Um, Alongside that, what you generally have to do is you have to write, uh, you know, these manuals and, you know, documents that help analysts understand how they triage that detection, how they uh, would go about doing a potential investigation, how, you know, what false positives look like. Um, these are really time consuming tasks. And guess what? Generative AI is designed to do exactly this. So if yeah. you if you give it a few bullet points and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, it is awesome at spitting out this uh, really thorough, nicely written, well-worded document um, that the analyst can then run with. Um, now, if you it, automate that. Well, I was going to say, that was my gonna, yeah. exactly my next question is, I take it you can automate it to be looking and hunting on its own. You don't have to ask it the question as, uh, as you see with sort of open AI uh, and those kind of similar platforms where you have to ask it. 
uh, you can adapt these tool sets to be hunting for you, right? Um, certainly. So, uh, look, the way I see it, that's what we're going to be doing in the next 6 to 12 months, potentially 12 plus months. Uh, where we are at the moment is, as an industry, we need to be confident that what these tools give you, um, the information that you get out of these tools is worth acting on. And, you know, we need to build a level of confidence around the output. Yeah. Um, but what I would say is, you know, you take a tiered approach. And again, this reminds me of the early days of Saul, where we said things like, hey, you know, if, if uh, a user account is doing something malicious or, you know, something on those lines, do an automated workflow that locks the user account out. You know, in the grand scheme of things, when you do your risk assessments, uh, locking a user out for a small period of time while you then go and figure out what's going on here, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, it, it makes sense in terms of weighing up the pros and cons. Um, so I think we'll end up taking a similar approach where there are going to be certain workflows that are going to be, you know, um, low, low risk, high reward. Uh, we're going to end up automating those and uh, use and we're going to figure out how we can better operationalize the output that comes out of these tools. How do you find because you're obviously you live and breathe this. You've been uh, with Elastic for about five years uh, across your customers. How do you find their maturity for these kind of models? They're. Uh, is it a learning curve for everybody or do you find some uh, really at the forefront? Uh, yeah, where, where, where do you see the skill sets for everybody? Because I I do hear what you've said is this is a learning curve for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, where, where do you see the maturity, particularly here in Australia, and maybe even some of the outcomes from what you saw at uh, CISO Melbourne this week? So what's cool about generative AI in, in terms of uh, new emerging technology is it's very different to some of the other ones where, you know, uh, if you kind of visualize it as kind of crossing the chasm a little bit, right? Um, there's a lot of work that has to be done before before you reach that inflection point to educate and make people aware and kind of get them on board the journey. Uh, but what's unique about generative AI um, is everyone's on board. Everyone mm. thinks it's awesome. Everyone thinks they need to be using it. They probably don't know how exactly to use it. They probably don't know what that looks and feels like in their environments. Uh, but, you know, just the way it's um, it's um, kind of worked out in out out in the um industry is that everyone thinks it's awesome everyone's taken chat gpt for a run everyone took dali 2 for a run back in the day uh, you know kind of making funny images and things like that um so so i think i think that's different but where the maturity is really gonna uh, where, where we're gonna learn more about this is when we're talking about automated workflows um, you know, the organizations that are going to make that jump and say, hey, you know, here are a set of, uh, you know, things that we need to do um, that we actually um, are confident about in terms of what we get out of LLMs. Uh, that is going to be the telling, uh, the, the telltale sign. Well, look, uh, Elastic, you've just released your eight, version 8.8 .8 of your uh, search engine there as well. Where's where's Elastic at? What's a sort of a good call to action? It's definitely worth having a look at Elastic.co. Uh, but yeah, where's where's the platform at at the moment? And so, so you, re, you sort of key market strengths do you see? Yeah, so um, what, one of the things that customers often come to us um, and, and you know start some of these conversations about is. Um, they've got explosions of data that are happening in their environments. You know, the size and scale of these uh, of these data sources is only going up, and they're struggling to kind of, you know, leverage these sources in a way that makes economical sense, right? Um, so Elastic as a platform, often, you know, that's where we generally start our journeys with customers. Uh, but then there are a few other things, like you know, when you look at modern cloud native environments where you're building brand new security capability. Um, there, there are things that make sense in terms of, hey, you know, the way we do things now, detections, for example, uh, are, are, a great, um, uh, are a great case because um, the way a lot of security tools do detections um, is really hard and cumbersome and it's hard to author new detections and keep them up to date. Uh, so one of the customers that we're working with in Australia, uh, you know, they're a digital native, uh, they're known as a unicorn startup, you know, uh, global brand. Um, before they came to us, they were spending about two weeks authoring a single security detection uh, oh, okay. for this, you know, massive estate that they've got on the cloud. Um, on Elastic, they were able to do that with about two, three hours worth of work. So, uh, you know, there's a modernization piece there 
uh, where we're able to kind of significantly uh, provide customers with some of those returns uh, on their investment. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it really depends on what, what their gaps are and what they're looking to do. So um, if uh, any of your viewers want to learn more, uh, elastic.co slash security is definitely a really good starting point. Uh, but also don't hesitate to reach out to us and, you know, one of one of our people will definitely be happy to sit down with you and talk through the details. <laughs> that sounds like a couple of people are reaching out to you now. I just heard that. Um, but look, uh, as, Jan, as you said, I think the name gives it away, Elastic. Uh, it sounds like you're in a, a good role as well where you are literally uh, finding the solutions uh, for the customers rather than telling them here's a, here's a solution for a problem that we haven't yet found. I think that's uh, the turning it around a little bit. So uh, the moment you hear the word elastic, you get a sense of what the company is about. Uh, but you're the cybersecurity lead for APAC uh, there. You're based in Sydney, uh, but it's a pleasure to have you there in Melbourne. Thanks for your contribution to the CISO Melbourne uh, event this week. Uh, we're pleased to be media partners and thanks for coming on our Tech and Sec Weekly. It's a pleasure, Chris. Thanks for having me.